I am my brother's keeper. Not only am I my brother's keeper, I'm my brother's children's keeper. You know, I am there to watch out for his son, his daughter, to make sure that they don't get uh, caught up in a lifestyle that would eventually uh, 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 hurt him or her. Uh, I am that. Empower You podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners. We discuss a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, cultural, and societal perspective. We believe that through tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. Subscribe to our channel and let us empower you. Welcome to Empower You Podcast. My name is Kibway Cooper, and I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, For today's topic, we're going to be discussing the naked truth that you hate. It is uh, very interesting. You know, there's a trend of, of being very authentic and unapologetically yourself. But I think we're doing ourselves a disservice if we don't fully embrace the 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 entirety of who we are of our own truths whether they are good or bad and so um, we need we need wisdom and how to do that and so I have a guest with me today who is going to just knock your socks off uh, he is so well spoken uh, so articulate a leader in the com- the community uh, a man of faith uh, Pastor Anthony Payton. Uh, how you doing? Doing well, sir. Doing well. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be here. That's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and um, just a little bit of how you got started before we jump into the questions? Just want to get to know you a little bit. Uh, I appreciate that, man. Uh, I, I currently serve as a, a senior pastor at Cummins Yuan Community Church. I've been serving in that capacity for about 20, almost 26 years now. Uh, I also uh, am what I would like to refer to a social entrepreneur. I, uh, I have a, a, a shoe company, Anthony Payton Signature Shoes. I also do uh, what I call Anthony Payton Bespoke, where we do uh, custom suits for weddings and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, I, I have an array, a plethora All right, now, <laughs> of plethora. things that the, the Lord has allowed me to do. I do uh, speaking uh, for uh, leadership development uh, workshops and uh, serve in various boards and et cetera. Uh, so I, I am, I am, I am that individual that uh, if you'd asked me 25 plus years ago, 26 year plus years ago, if I would be at this station in life, I probably would have said no. Uh, <laughs> but uh, God has been gracious and He has been kind. And he's opened up doors, and I tried to be a good steward of those doors. That's amazing. That's really awesome. Uh, and it's and it is really interesting that you do all of those different things. So generally, you know, when I was growing up, uh, the pastor generally he just cut hair. Like that was it. Your pastor could cut hair, and he was a preacher. <laughs> And that was that was pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I don't think there's yeah, anything wrong yeah, with that. I was good but you know, the pastor preneur no. is 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 the, is the new it's the new wave. And I think it's really great because um, I think what bothered me, now this is a little bit of a sidebar, but what bothered me, you know, growing up in the church was just, I didn't understand how the pay structure structure worked for pastors. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. because that was never truly made clear in a public way, it just left Mm -hmm. a lot of ideas out there. That's one. And then yeah. on the on the the flip side of that is you see other organizations and the extravagance that some of these pastors live in, which, you know, I'm not saying that's necessarily a good or a bad thing, but I do think that's definitely something of note. <laughs> so um it it I'm I'm yeah. I'm very well, happy. Well, you know, about I, that. I I I uh, I understand that. I understand that uh both for uh, you know, from that intellectual experiential, you know, on the outside looking in and, and sometimes because we are not, uh, we leave uh, the blank unfilled. 
And yeah. so people are left to fill in the blank themselves, you know. Uh, but for me, you know, it's always been there, bro. That 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 entrepreneurial spirit has always been there. When I came to Come As You Are, for instance, I only had uh, 12 members here, uh, 11 ladies and one man. Uh, most the majority of the people had left from the previous pastor's tenure. Hmm. Um, and, and I was called, I like to say, to make brick without straw. You know, <laughs> there was no money. <laughs> right. There was no money. Uh, uh, and so when, was, and, and I love ministry. And even when I served as Christian education director at the, uh, True Love, where I started off, you know, I, uh, I loved to do ministry, but the church could not pay me. So I found ways to do that. I started doing desktop publishing back then oh, and wow. doing people's resume and doing uh, family reunions, uh, uh, books. I published a magazine, Legacy Christian Magazine. I did all that because I wanted to do ministry and uh, God opened up the door. And so when I came here, I found myself in a similar situation. And uh, I just used those, uh, what I call social entrepreneurial skills uh, and uh, took care of my family and myself because uh I, I, God asked me to leave a job that was paying good money. And so I needed yeah. to continue to pay, pay my bills and the church couldn't pay me. So I did what I needed to do. And I think many pastors do that. You know, they, they it's not known, you know, it's, it, that they have those uh, secondary skills. And, and, and there's a good biblical paradigm for that. Paul was a tent maker, you know, and he talks about, uh, you know, in Philippians about, you know, when the money wasn't coming, he made tents and sold tents so he could continue the ministry. Right. So there, there's a biblical uh, paradigm for that. Oh, wow. You know, um, I never really thought about pastors as entrepreneurs. So all of this is kind of new for me. Yeah. Um, okay. But again, these things weren't talked about. Like, yeah. Entrepreneurship yeah. was yeah. not something that was discussed growing up at all so yeah it was it's interesting and i love it i think it's awesome i didn't mean to yeah. pull you into a whole entrepreneurship talk no no i but... enjoy that i mean I, hey that's a rabbit i'll chase any day bro. <laughs> <laughs> man i completely agree i have been working for myself and and doing different things for uh quite a while now and i'm really thankful it's, it's starting to yeah. really pay off in a way that um i just foresee a lot of a lot more growth. And so yeah. I'm excited yeah. about it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, um, so we're here to talk about the naked truth you hate. Uh, what's the first thing that you think of when, when you think about that, that term, the naked truth you hate, what's, what ideas, what thoughts does that stimulate for you? Well, you know, I, I, when you, when you, uh, announced that phrase, I, I, I pictured myself standing in the mirror and, 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 and looking honestly at myself and, and the things that uh, I know behind the scene that, that I don't like about myself and, and, and the things that, that the public don't know about. And I think all of us have those things that we have to be uh, religiously, if you allow me, honest about mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to those, those, those blind spots and behaviors that... Uh, that, that we are not, we're not all that in a bag of chips. And I think mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we have to acknowledge that and own them in order to get better. And so uh, I, I, one of the things that I, I have tried to do over the course of my uh, ministry life, because I didn't, I, 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 I didn't come into this ministry thing, you know, the, the traditional way, you know, my dad wasn't a pastor and then subsequently I inherited the church and all those good things. Mm. <laughs> I, I came straight off. You throw in shade there, Pastor. I came straight off the street. <laughs> I came straight off the street. <laughs> yeah. You know, I came from that context. And so one of the things that I knew because of that, those idiosyncrasies from the street, even though I, I, I love God and I'm saved and I thank God for my saved life, I knew that I had to have a, a level of accountability in my life. Mm. Uh, and, and, and for me, I've always believed that if you want longevity in ministry, and I would say if you want longevity in leadership, if you want longevity in whatever capacity you serve, you got to have accountability in your life. You have to have people in your life that can look you in the face and tell you the truth about yourself. Mm. And because, you know, we have the tendency you know, particularly within 
uh, our community, African American community, but not limited there. You know, once the headlines are start to are, have been written and you've, you've got the articles in the paper and, and, and <laughs> people are talking about what a wonderful job you're doing, you start believing that stuff and your Ooh. and your egg gets in the way. Ooh. And before you know it, you know, you 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 on your on the path to, a, to to being a plum fool, as my grandmother used to say, mm. you know, and so it's it, I've always tried to have men in my life that help me accountable to to my standard of life you know and 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 it has worked for me and I, and they've asked me that tough those, those tough questions and and they and they haven't necessarily been a part of my community they've been majority of them have been white you know and they didn't live in, in the community and which made it more made it made, made it more made it easier for me to be honest when they asked me the question because they would ask me you know how you treating your wife? You know, I understand you're doing a lot of traveling, but you know, you're know, you spending time with your wife, or you're spending time with your children, or, or you know, all those kind of things. You know, they would ask me and look me in the face, and they knew enough about me that I couldn't hide it. So I think when you ask me that, I think of accountability. I think of uh, being honest with myself that you know, no matter what people think of me and whatever my public persona is. I have to be honest about those blind spots and about those idiosyncrasies that that, that are there and having the, the accountability in my life to make sure that I don't, as my grandmother said, become a plum fool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that accountability. Um, I think I know in some cases, you know, we shield ourselves from that. We, we, we don't allow people close enough to... Exactly to 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 create that space so you're always living in this like bubble of yeah. of, of your own self-image uh, yeah. which is counterproductive in my opinion but i i understand it though i understand that i don't i don't yeah and i think it even it. takes on a different dynamic and more intense dynamic when it comes to african-american males because we have been raised not to do that. Mm. I don't. I don't want you in my business. I don't want you to know this about me. You know, I don't. I don't want you asking me those kind of questions. I want to keep you on the outside, and so it takes on a whole different dynamic within uh, the, the 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 context of African American men uh, of having accountability, and and so it was a little tough because I came from an environment where you couldn't trust anybody. You know, like I said, I came from the street. You couldn't trust anybody. You was always looking over your shoulder. So when I came to Christ, you know, I had to I had to go through that transformation and, and allow people into that space to hold me accountable so that I could I, I would have longevity in what I felt God had called for me to do. Tell me about that journey, you know, about. You know, going from, you know, the streets um, and and deciding to be something different, uh, creating a, a different life for yourself, discovering, you know, the things that you hated about yourself. Like, I know my own struggles and I just can't imagine having to fight back through so much more than that, you know. And I think it goes back to the whole saying, you know, God will never give you more than you can bear. There's all those things, right? And mm -hmm. I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's different to hear it from somebody. Um, well, you know, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I'm, I hesitate because I don't know where to jump into this because this could be a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so well, I, I don't want to take up all the time with that. But let me, <laughs> let me, let me share this with you. You know, I. I, I got involved in that lifestyle at a very young age. My, my, I'm, a, I'm an only child, uh, and um, I had never had a relationship with my biological father, and my stepfather had uh, a lifestyle that was, was criminal. And so in New York City, we, I got introduced to that kind of lifestyle, got involved in, in doing things. I remember very, I must have been seven and my uncle and my stepfather took me down to the local store, you know, in New York back then, there was a store in every corner, maybe two or right. three before you got to the corner, right. you know, 
and 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 my job was their job was to 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 distract the the owner and i was to steal whatever they wanted that was my introduction into criminal behavior that that led to drinking alcohol alcohol led to marijuana marijuana led to a uh, heroin and cocaine habit that i end up sleeping outdoors and and and, and abandoned houses abandoned cars uh, in and out of treatment centers, in and out of, uh, of, of jail. Uh, I received a three-year sentence, decided I really didn't like doing time, found a way to escape, and was a fugitive of justice for about five years. And uh, that's how I ended up in Indiana, what I call Mayberry. It was a good place to hide back then. <laughs> 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 you know? And wow. so I, I came here, and, uh, uh, and, my, and I became my best customer. And if you know what I mean, you know, I yeah. went from slinging to, to, to being my best customer. And once you become your best customer in that oh, yeah. world, you, 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 you out in the game. Yeah. And so I with a severe habit and, um, uh, uh, in and out treatment centers. And I shot a three C three CC syringe of synthetic heroin up, wanted to die, discovered that I really did not want to die, end up in a treatment center for seven days. At the end of seven days, I found myself saying, I need a better life. I had been in this treatment center before. Ended up going back to Mississippi when my grandmother was dying of Parkinson's disease. And I uh, felt like I needed to stay, even though I knew I was a fugitive there, to help her because she had invested so much into me. Yeah. And so one day, I, I while helped there staying, they, uh, I was downtown picking up some medication for her. They pulled me, uh, pulled me over and thought I was somebody else, discovered exactly who I was, locked me up. So I was looking at three years for the original charge of grand larceny and five years for the escape charge. And that it was there in that jail cell that I had my tipping point. You know, uh, I, when I say the continuum of my tipping point uh, came from that abandoned house where, where I tried to OD and then that led to, that, to the jail house. And it was there that uh, uh, Gideon, um, are you familiar with the Gideons? The, the guys that leave the Bible in the hotel rooms and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, know, yeah. Okay. Doctor's office. Uh, it was there that a Gideon uh, led me to, to the Lord in there in the jail cell. And I told him basically my story. And he believed that I was genuinely trying to change my life. Uh, got 20, uh, 20 people of his uh, cultural um, uh, context, 20 white folks. Let me just say it like that. You got 20 <laughs> white guys in their wives uh, to believe the same thing. And uh, they signed a petition and took it before the judge and the judge turned me over to them. And uh, he discipled me for uh, three years. So rather than going to prison and doing those eight years, I ended up being discipled by this uh, old Gideon who was a Marine. And um, uh, and the rest is history. Wow. So I, I've, uh, I've had and continue to have, bro, a very good life in spite of everything that I've been through and, and everything that I have deliberately done. I, I, I don't make excuses for the, that. I can't say, I don't blame my stepfather. I don't blame my biological father because that came point in my life where I knew exactly what I was doing. Yeah. But I thank God for Buck, that gentleman that led me in. I thank God for those, those other men that was a part of his, his sphere of influence and their wives that signed a petition and got me out and, 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 and believed in me. And um, I am where I am because they believed in me through the grace of God. And um, um, that's my story. I'm, you know, and I, 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 I'm here, you know, because of that. I'm stressed. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is incredible. Yeah, you definitely faced some truths that you hated. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then also yeah. to receive such grace right in the midst of that. That's something special. That that is that. I mean, you know, I had somebody tell me once, and and then you know, you you run across these, what I call very spiritual people, and I said, well, you know, you're not doing that anymore. You really should stop sharing that story. And I said, 
I, I'm not sharing me. I'm not authentic to who I am today. If I cut that chapter out of my life, yeah, you know, and stop talking about it, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, I should test him. That's man. that's my journey. That, uh, that part was that, and and as you said, uh, to receive grace in the midst of that is is, is power. It's tremendous. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So yeah. you go through all of that, you become a pastor, uh, a minister, you start your own ministry, um, and you start teaching people. Mm-hmm. So what what's what's that like to to be so keenly aware of your own shortcomings, to have seen yourself wow. in, a, in a hated position? Wow so much wow now you're working with somebody and trying to help them get through that was that triggering was that uh uh uh, frustrating because you feel like they're not grasping something like do you feel i'm sure you hear the cop outs right you hear the i can't Mm -hmm. help it's the i'm a victim of this situation um and but then you have your own your own you know journey that proves otherwise and you're trying yeah. to help people get there. How is that? How is that balance? Because yeah. I feel like that has to to be just a real challenge across everything you want to do. It is, and 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 you put it. I couldn't articulate it any better. It is. It is the question of all questions, you know, in terms of 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 of, of where I am now. The, 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 the positive part of that, and you alluded to it, is the fact that it keeps me humble, you know, because I'm aware, keenly aware and keenly sensitive to the reality that there, but by the grace of God, there said I, <laughs> you know, I, I am that person. I am, I am Pookie, <laughs> you know, I am that person that's sitting there. <laughs> and and so uh, uh, it, it helps me no matter how how much I have been allowed to achieve, it keeps my feet on the ground. Well, you're not going to be a shepherd, a true shepherd, if you don't smell like sheep. And oh, sheep my stay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, and so you, you have to be, you have to realize that you are part of that smell, that you have to humble yourself and be patient. You know, think about this, bro. I pastor a church. Come as you are, community church. It would be the height of hypocrisy for me to have a church named that and not accept people where they are. Yeah. No matter how many times they've blown it. Yeah. So there's there's that there's that positive side that keeps me humble. The other part is is the challenging piece, because I know even though it you know I know this. You too, you too young to know this statement, but there was an old, <laughs> old, old detective movie television series came out year, years ago, and it was it, it, the tagline was "There's ten thousand stories in the neck of city, and this is just one of them." Mm. Well. Today is the day and now is the time. If you have a good idea, good intentions, and are looking for a way to get audience and to get your great message out to the world, I encourage you to start your very own podcast. You would be surprised the amount of folks who are waiting to hear your content. My name is Kidboy Cooper, and I have been an audio engineer for the past seven years years and I am offering one-on-one coaching to help you get through the beginning stages of creating your very own podcast. Please reach out to me and let me know how I can help you. My email address is empoweryoupodcast at gmail.com. We offer one-on-one coaching, a live masterclass, and even a 10-module course that will take you through the entire process of creating, producing, and distributing your podcast to your very own listeners. This is a great avenue to connect with your audience and to connect with people who are in need of your voice. Again, reach out to me at empoweryoupodcast at gmail.com and let's get your podcast started today. I think that in that context, you know, people have different journeys 
but there's still some of the same underpinnings, some of the same mm-hmm. principles that are needed in order for that person to climb out of that hole, that pit. And so even though your drug of choice may have been something else, it may not have been literally drugs, it may be a sexual addiction. The underpinnings of what it takes to get out of that is still there. The principles are still there. And so I have been able to marry the experiential with the practical, the pragmatic. Here's the problem, but what is the pragmatic solution to it? Here's some of the things that you need to do, the practice to get out of that. And and, and it has made me more patient with people, but it's also helped me to be keenly keenly aware of when I need to push people, Mm. when I need to get them out of the pity party. And I need to crash that pity party and tell them to stop crying and start doing. Does that make sense? It does. I, I want you to to take a moment and explain what being pragmatic is um, and how you apply that. Well, I, I apply it like this. Here, everybody, well, I'll say everybody, I may be over more too, too general, but most people in our life know the problem. And most of them can articulate that this is your problem. The, ve- the very few people could give you steps to resolve the problem. It's the old adage, just say no. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's more to it than just saying no. Yeah. You know, you know over, if, if over that's simplification. Drug, yeah. Nobody would be on drugs because <laughs> every jockey has said no a hundred times before he literally or she literally stops using. So pragmatically, what are the principles? What are the steps that's going to take me to where I want to go? You know, um, and I think for me, it starts with having a big vision of, of who I am and what God wants to achieve in my life, because a big vision a long-term vision helps me to uh, not get stuck with short-term failures. Ooh. That's that's good. You know, the, the, the a long-term vision helps me not to get stuck in short-term failures. Yeah. And and pragmatically, that vision pulls me and and says, "Tony, you got to do this, and you got to do this." So. Every individual needs somebody in their life to help them get there. I put it like this. Every man needs a Paul. He needs that older man that, that, that's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, that can, <laughs> that, 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 that can walk him out of there. <laughs> that, that, uh, that can help him man, that's a walk good out of there. You know? And every man needs a Timothy. He needs somebody that he's pouring into. There's a reason why the Dead Sea is dead. It collects, nothing comes out, you know? Mm. <laughs> so, so most of us, we just collect truth. We just collect principle, but we never pour in our lives into anyone else. The Bible used the term disciple. We never disciple. Corporate America uses the term mentor. We never mentor, you know? Yeah. So we need a Paul, we need a Timothy, but we also need a Barnabas, and that's an encourager. Barnabas in Scripture was an encourager. And Barnabas uh, encouraged John Mark when Paul said, I'm done with it. Get him out of here. He turned his back and went back home when it was time to do ministry. Barnabas says, okay, I'm going to take him. And Barnabas encouraged him and got him back in the fold. So when Paul is in, in prison, he knows he's about to die. He, calls, he, 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 he tells him, hey, send John Mark. For he's profitable to the ministry. Why? What happened? He had hung out with Barnabas. He had hung out with the son of encouragement. Barnabas mm-hmm. in Greek uh, is, is, is the word encouragement. So we need that triad. We need that triad. We need that pragmatic triad. We need a Paul. We need a Timothy. And we need a Barnabas. Mm-hmm. Or if you're a woman, you need a Paulette. <laughs> You need a Teresa. 
<laughs> and a barber. And, you, know, man, you, you know, you need somebody that occupies those those positions yeah. in your life to help you be pragmatic about your life and yeah. be more focused on solutions than problems. Wow. So I try to do that. I try to, I should stop saying try. In this podcast, we do thought exercises, which you mm. know, you'll get the opportunity mm. to do at the end because I, I want to take that kind of approach. You know, yes, this is the problem. Yes, this is this is the the scenario. These are the things that we're facing, our challenge. Um, but l- what's a practical thing we can just start doing every day mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. start to make mm-hmm. that shift? You mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. I remember when I was young uh, and younger <laughs> and was, you know, on and off of buses and trains and walking to and from places. I, I grew up in Gary, Indiana. So, you know, when the snow, all of this snow is nothing compared to the the, the snow that you get off of that Chicago, yeah. man. Yeah, you're over that Chicago land. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you talking knee yeah. high, you know. And um, I just remember how small the world felt mm. and how mm. I just didn't think I would ever be able to do anything but what what I grew up seeing around me. And wow. it was it I it I I completely credit, you know, faith and imagination, um, you know, to to my ability to see past that. Um, because for a while, you know, and even now, it's it's much better now because I'm actively doing certain things that help. But mm-hmm. I just think about being, you know, that 15, 16 year old on the bus, looking at all these different lives that are playing out around you, looking at all mm-hmm. these different mm-hmm. life paths that mm-hmm. get on and off of the bus, get on and off of the train that you walk past and you see every day doing similar things. Then I used to work at the library. So I used to watch and I used to see these homeless guys coming in. They had all the best stories and they could tell you about all kinds of things. But somehow these brilliant men were in these desolate positions. Yeah. You know, and so it it just gives you a really wide range of how am I going to do any of this? You know, and I didn't come from uh, privilege by any means. Uh, my parents taught me how to be a good human being and a man of character, which I endeavor mm. to be. Uh, but all the rest of that stuff, they can help you with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't, you didn't show up in high school. Oh, in Lord. Oh, oh, God. You, <laughs> you know, and, and it's okay. There's not, that's not, yeah. that's definitely not a knock because, yeah. Um, yeah. The, but it, it is interesting that when you, when you talk about, how you need certain people in your life. Um, that's one of the, I want to be one of those pillars for mm. somebody. That's why I created this podcast. Mm-hmm. I hope I can be mm-hmm. one of those pillars for a lot of people mm-hmm. and at least encourage them. I mean, just repeat what you hear on here. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Steal all the mm-hmm. bars. Don't say that I said it. Don't say that Pastor Payton said it, but just take it and pour it into somebody else. You know, and so I know I can't be everywhere at once. And so I love how you're talking about, you know, uh, being pragmatic about solutions. And I try to be that and I try to surround myself with people who are also like that. Uh, It's just like, let's let's break this down first. You need to do this. And once we get you done with that, we can start talking about the next thing. But before we can't even discuss all the rest of this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's- yeah, I, 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 everywhere I've been, and I've, I've been privileged to do a lot of traveling since I've been saved and in and out of the country, and, and everywhere I've been, had the privilege to go, I've tried to, to develop relationship with that in mind. Uh, I, 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 I like hanging out with the everyday people in those countries, you know, or where, or whether it's Brazil or. Or Dominican or Rome or wherever it may be. I like to get to know the people on the everyday life. You know, get out, get out of the exclusive hotel and hit the street, you know, and develop relationships like that. Because you never know what that singular person may need at that very moment. And you aren't there just because you will, you could afford the trip. You're there because God has put that person in your timeline. 
mm. in order for you to say the right thing, mm. in order to shift them to a whole different sphere. And 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 my wife and I, that's what we try to do. You know, we 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 try to do that. And it just makes us good citizens. Do you know what a word, uh, uh, you know the etymology of the word mentor? You know where the word mentor comes from? I do not. You do not? No, sir. No, sir, I don't. The word mentor, uh, Homer, Homer and 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 his, and you're familiar with the Odyssey yes, and, 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 mm -hmm. and all that. And, and so, and, 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 and the Odyssey, uh, when Odysseus goes off, and to fight the war, the Trojan Wars, and he's away. He knows he's going to be away for years. His son is a very young kid. He's a baby virtually, and and he knows the most important thing that he could do is leave his son, it's somebody in his life, to help him because he knows he's not going to be around to help him uh, become a man. And so he leaves him in the hands of a slave. He leaves him in the hand of his trusted slave. And so when Homer finally comes back out of from the Trojan Wars, years later, his son is a man. And he attributes the character, he attributes the, the, his son's uh, manhood to that slave. That slave is Mentor. That slave's name was Mentor. That's where we get the word, the concept of Mentor from, from Homer's Odyssey. You know, wow. That's what we have to always be doing for one another. You know, uh, I, I think that in our community historically, it is it has had those those mentors, those those the, the the neighbor down the street. I grew up in Mississippi for a lot of times, and even in New York, their houses were so close. That everybody knew when you was when you were shouting or crying or enjoying the music because everybody heard it. But we were you you couldn't tell nobody to get out of your business because 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 everybody knew in New York you know right. because the houses were so close. But the older people had a right to say to me, "Boy, that's not how your mama raised you. You need to get in there, get off these streets, street light on, and you know your mama would want you home by now." Or you don't do this. And it's down south of Mississippi, even though uh, there was more space between the house, you had that community accountability. And you had those people in the community that said that even in cities like Gary and New York and et cetera, you had the older uh, uh, guys, the, 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 the other older dealers saying, boy, get off these streets. Go on. You ain't got no business out here. You don't want this life. We have lost that. We have lost that, you know. Uh, uh, and I think that for, for me, it's the combination of being pragmatic because I'm obligated. I am my brother's keeper. Not only am I my brother's keeper, I'm my brother's children's keeper. Right. You know, I am there to watch out for his son, his daughter, to make sure that they don't get uh, caught up in a lifestyle that would eventually... Uh, 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 hurt him or her. Uh, I am that, you know. Um, wow. When I first got saved, there were, there were four books that, that that shaped me. Naturally, the first was the Bible. I couldn't put it down. I read it every day, all day, as much as I could. And then there was um, uh, uh, the sociologist, uh, Black sociologist from Superman to Man. I don't know if you're familiar with some of the books from Superman to Man. You're not familiar with that mm -mm. book. Get the book. It's a must read for anybody. It, it's actually, I just give you a, 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 a brief description of it. This he talks about this 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 African American who's on the train. He's a he's a, he's a porter on the train, and he meets this very intellectual uh, white Southerner that only sees black folks as slaves and in, and, and superior. He this is a white supremacist, and over the course of the train ride. This black man gives him a history lesson <laughs> and, 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 and turns Superman into man by helping him to understand that black folks have been around and we've accomplished stuff outside of the sphere of, 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 of what we know black folks in America, et cetera. Yeah. That book changed my life. The next book was, was by James Baldwin. 
from uh, from uh, uh, the fire next time. That that book uh, was a part of that, and probably the the one out of all of those that 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 became the pragmatic thrust for my life was a was a collection of of writings from Du Bois, and 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 one of the writings he, was a, a speech that he gave in 1937 uh, at Fisk University. On, on, uh, it was, he was speaking to the graduating class. And, um, and uh, he entitled the speech, St. Origin, the Dam. And, and, and no one understood where he got the word origin from. Who was St. Origin? And, and, and he had taken the word Negro and, and, and spelled it backwards and came up with St. Origin the Dam. As only divorce could do. Wow. As only divorce could do. And, and, he's, and there's, there's this, there's, it's a long speech, but there's a portion of it. When I read it, I knew that this had to be a part of my pragmatic journey. And he says, what is this life I see? Is the dark damnation of color real or simply my own imagining? Can it be true that the souls wrapped in black velvet have a destiny different than those swaddled in white satin and yellow silk? When all these coverings are the fruit of the same worm and threaded by the same hand, or must I ignore an all seeming difference arise to some upper realm in life where there's neither sex, wealth, nor age, but all stand equal in the sun? And then he goes on. He said, gentlemen are bred, not born. They receive manners from those that surround them and not from their blood. Manners maketh man and are the essence of good breeding. It has to do with forms of salutation between civilized persons, with the care and cleanliness and grooming of the body. They know that dirt is matter misplaced and they seek to replace it. Once these elementary rules are missed, it is seldom replaced by any later agency. It is the job of the family to make sure that every kid has this. That changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was uh, the pragmatic tipping point for my life. I saw that I had to be a part of that continuum. Yeah. Because I knew that once that, that those those elementary rules was not there, was in that kid's life, that I had to be a part of making sure they got there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. First of all, I'm a little speechless. That was that was powerful. That was powerful. Um I don't know how you all are feeling listening to this, but that was a whole lot. I'm going to have to really really process that because that's the decay, right? That, that is, is the that decay is. when we miss yeah. that that we yeah. each are each other's savior. Not mm -hmm. because it's anything special. It's 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 the culmination of of good habits, of respect, of character, of uh, oh my goodness, that is like I'm gonna have to listen to that again. Um, I'm not gonna we, have you. We gave up a lot, and I'm saying that we shouldn't do it. But as a community of people, as as African Americans, as Black folks, we gave up a lot to go to their schools, to sit in their classrooms, to live in their neighborhoods. And what we gave up chiefly is that community accountability, mm -hmm. that sense of esteem. Right. You're not, you, you do realize in our community, teachers at one time were more esteemed than preachers because the, our community recognized that without the teacher, there was no educated preacher mm. you know we gave up a lot to sit in their classrooms i'm not you know, and i understand that i understand oh absolutely but that community accountability and etc it cost us because what we had even in then was a sense of respect for our neighbor it was a sense of respect for, for the ourselves. older people the young yeah yeah yes I've I've been reading, I've been uh, listening. So like I, I get up really early and go to the gym and I've been listening to um, the new Jim Crow. 
Yeah. And, right. and right. the right. way that they break down and unravel this issue of mass incarceration and class and things. So when you're saying this, I'm like, that makes so yeah. much sense because without the teachers, yeah. without protectors, without, yeah. you know, the structure, the protection of the community, of the family, who is left to teach these messages? Mm-hmm. Who mm-hmm. is left to hold the line, to hold the standard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that all just makes so much sense. It, And it reminds me like my earliest so growing up in Gary, the first the first experiences that I ever had with drugs or or guns, one um first first gun that was ever, you know, introduced to me uh came from the police. Uh, me and my mm-hmm. brother were outside, they were looking for somebody and they held us up um to figure out if we knew something or 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 you know, if we you know, they always say you fit the description, but they were looking for yeah, somebody, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that was my first, me and my brother, I don't even think we ever, I don't even know if we told our parents about that. Because we knew how frustrated and and, and angry they would be about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were probably, I mean, I don't even think we were that much, that far outside of the house. Like, you know, they just pulled up on us. And then the other thing that makes me think about is the first time I was ever introduced to drugs. Mm. And... I think I was like 14 or something and I was at the library and this guy told me because, you know, it was, it was pretty well known um, that I spoke well and that I worked hard and that I was, you know, trustworthy. Right. But I think most of that just comes from the fact that I just wasn't, I didn't hold myself the way that other people do. Right. Okay. Um, Based off of the, 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 based off of the the environment I was raised in, my parents, remember I was telling you about that. Yeah. 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 Um, and so some people will look at that like this is an opportunity, you know, and other people would look at that as this is something special that you mm-hmm. need to preserve. So when I'm listening mm-hmm. to you talking about the mindset and the the pillars that of 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 influence that you need in your life. You know, there's so many things that make sense because at that moment, you know, um, this guy, he literally asked me if I wanted to to work with him. You know, he mm-hmm. was just like, man, like, because I was going to try to get a job at the library, which I eventually did and all that stuff. And he was just like, you ain't going to make no money in here. You know, like, I, we, we can we can work. We can work, you know, and, I, and I've seen you coming up here and, and you know, we were cordial and. Uh, this was back in the, um, uh, this is back in the day, right? Where you used to have to give you mm-hmm. a library card, you sign out on a p- piece of paper, yeah, you get yeah, an hour yeah, on yeah, a computer, yeah, yeah. all of yeah. that, you know. So I knew people from that, and then on the juxtaposition, the other side of that, you have other older guys who who absolutely held me to a standard, and if they saw me doing or participating or talking to anybody, they're like, man, don't be talking to him. He's a fool. Don't talk to him. You don't want to be yeah. nowhere around him. And I yeah. credit those older guys for yeah. for helping yeah. me in my own naivete yeah. uh, and my own desire just to 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 have things. You know, when you grow up and you don't have a lot of things, you grow up and you see a lot of need in your family. You know, these are the naked truths that make you susceptible to things that you don't like. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't have any ill feelings about my mm-hmm. family, but the reality is, you know, the truth that I hate is that certain things that you experience when you don't have, when you don't have access, when you don't have resources, they change the way that you view things, which can affect other things. So, you know, in, in, in wrapping it all up, as far as the naked truth you hate, these behaviors can stick with you Mm -hmm. if you don't address them, you know? Yeah. They, they, they become, they shape your paradigm. They shape the way you think and subsequently shape your behavior. I mean, once you, you know, once, you know, the Bible says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. You know, what the idea is that once you embrace uh, a thought and, and, and think about that thought, then you, your life, you start to live that out. You start to, to, exemplify, uh, to show that in your behavior. And I think that, you know, the, you know, uh, what was it? Watchman Nee, uh, the, the old Chinese spiritual, he, he would say that the mind is the citadel 
where the battle is raging. If the enemy can capture the mind, when you when you grow up and you see certain things and experience certain negativity, if 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 you if your family structure is 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 late to pulling that weed out, I'll put it like that. Yeah. That weed grows and subsequently becomes a behavior. Right. Uh, and if you don't have strong examples in the community that gets in there and de-weed those yeah, thoughts. Absolutely. Uh, 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 it becomes behavior. We all are part of that continuum of de-weeding one another. Uh, are, are, are getting those weeds out that, 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 so that they don't grow and become behavior that, that, that is negative, not only for the individual, but for the community and, 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 and the city and the country as a whole. Uh, so in that, in that process, we have to be, to go back to your original point, we have to stand in the mirror and be honest about ourselves. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta look at the stuff that we that we don't like, and 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 the stuff that we participate in that ain't right. Today is the day, and now is the time. If you have a good idea, good intentions, and are looking for a way to get audience and to get your great message out to the world, I encourage you to start your very own podcast. You would be surprised the amount of folks who are waiting to hear your content. My name is Kibway Cooper, and I have been an audio engineer for the past seven years years and I am offering one-on-one coaching to help you get through the beginning stages of creating your very own podcast. Please reach out to me and let me know how I can help you. My email address is empoweryoupodcast at gmail.com. We offer one-on-one coaching, a live masterclass, and even a 10-module course that will take you through the entire process of creating, producing, and distributing your podcast to your very own listeners. This is a great avenue to connect with your audience and to connect with people who are in need of your voice. Again, reach out to me at empoweryoupodcast at gmail.com and let's get your podcast started today. Isn't that the fact that you, they issue, they're not, they're not keeping it 100 about their own stuff. Mm-hmm. So they're just faking it. Yeah. So I try to be real with my own stuff. What's what's something that like once you have, you know, you're talking about keeping it real with yourself. You, you know, you're talking about you know staying uh, um, objective, pragmatic about your own life, I mean, your own identity, okay. your own truth. Where uh-huh. what have you done in moments? What do you do? I'll put it that way. In moments where you feel like you're literally doing everything you can do, right? You feel as though, you know, you are addressing the naked truths you hate. You are addressing the parts of yourself that you can't do anything about. You can only deal with them from here. You can't change your past. You can't change how you grew up. You can't change whatever hurts you've gone through, whatever abuse, whatever any of you can't change any of those things. So now you've gotten yourself to a, a position, right? You've gotten yourself to a point where you can respect yourself. And, and you have problems and you have you make mistakes or you experience a setback in some way. How do you climb back out? Because I just I, I think of I think of, you know, uh, um, addictions, you know, when people when they when they fall off, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that climb back up, I can only imagine is that much more difficult. So, you know, how do you, what is your, what's a process for that? How do we, how do we, we not only address who we are and why we are and what made us that way, but also when we are experiencing issues, when we are experiencing setbacks or we've just disappointed ourselves, maybe we made a bad decision. Maybe we talked to someone Mm -hmm. we cared about really badly. Maybe we did something that we just can't fully forgive ourselves for how do you get back to that position of of being okay with yourself i talked to my therapist (laughs) (laughs) well 
<laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with All that. Aside, literally, you know, there, there, there's there, you know, the Bible says this in Proverbs. It says that in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. Oh, watch this. It doesn't say in the multitude of counselors, there's knowledge. It says in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. And there's a vast difference between the two. Um, and I try to have in my life a, a wisdom pool, a multitude of individuals that I can pull from uh, uh, who has the wisdom to help me pull out of uh, whatever situation I've gotten myself into. And, and, and they're not yes men or yes women. Uh, they're going to hold me accountable. But they are, they know me well enough to know what it's going to take. Now, this is very important. They know me well enough to know what it's going to take for me to get out of that slump. You know, and that's different because, you know, this ain't a one shoe fits all or one size fits all kind of scenario. I'm wired differently than you are. And what it may take for you is going to be different to me, even though there are some underpinnings, principles that are maybe the same, but they, they, they bring it to me in a way that, that, that I can receive it. For instance, they're going to they're gonna, they, they're gonna be, they're gonna bring the intellectual side of me because they know I have to try to understand it. They know I'm wired like that. I'm not... I'm not a feeling person per se. Uh, you know, I I I, I, <laughs> I I have to I have to have the intellectual side of this whole thing communicated to me in a way that I can see why I can say, that's it. That's it. That's it. So they're gonna bring it to me like that. You know, and so I literally think the most important thing and one of one of the things that has been vital for me is having that wisdom pool in my life. Let me give you an example. I already told you the gentleman and those individuals that, that, that led me to a saving knowledge of Christ, et cetera. Uh, when I came to Fort Wayne and, and I came to Fort Wayne to, to go to school, and I was going to go to Fort Wayne Bible College, that same individual uh, wrote me in, that led me to Christ, wrote a check to buy a ticket a bus ticket for me to come to Fort Wayne. When I got here and my and, and my stepfather and I, we worked the same job, but he didn't, I didn't have a car. He didn't want me riding with him. So uh, I would come in depressed because his lifestyle was different. And he didn't want, he didn't, he didn't want me around. And so uh, 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 I, this old man who led me to Christ sent me the down payment for a car. Uh, uh, and I got a car. I answered an ad on the board at the college for work. And, 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 and the gentleman told me, Jack, he says all the years that he placed that he owned the company, he said all the years that I placed this ad on the board, nobody from this college has ever called me about a job. That gentleman who owned the factory called the factory when I was working on the machine and said he wanted to take me to lunch. He took me to lunch. I thought he was going to fire me because he was a good guy. And he was just going to give me my last supper. <laughs> he took me to lunch and he says, you know, I watch you and, and, and it, it, you, 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 you try to live what, here it is. I see you try to live what you preach. He says, uh, I need somebody like that working in my company. And I need somebody that's, to run my co company uh, that has that, 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 those kind of ethics. But I was looking at your resume, you have no business background. I said, no, I'm going to school to be a pastor, preacher. He said, yeah, but I can teach you what you need to know about business. I'm gonna offer you the plant manager position of my company. I said, what? He offered me the plant manager position, gave me a company car, and, and here it is mentored me and taught me a side of business that I never thought I would need. He became a part of that wisdom pool. 
fast forward to when I when I was going to, you know when, when the church we was moving into this new building we started with twelve the church was growing we needed more space and 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 this and I and and in the process my my house flooded and 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 it rained so much that the water came in and 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 just destroyed my base my library was in the basement and my library was ruined a lot of my books was ruined and I was frustrated so. I'm, I'm in the process of renov renovating the building. My 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 28,000 square foot building at that, and 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 my house flood, and I and I'm frustrated. I'm riding around one night in the car, and I see this house for sale. And it says for sale by owner, huge house, 10,000 square feet. And 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 I'm saying I can't afford nothing like that, but it's a nice house. And so uh, the next day I called the guy. He says, I'm out of town. I'll be back next week, long story short. And I'll be glad to show you the house. So I go, I go, my wife and I, my wife says, we can't afford this. What are we doing here? My mom says, here it is, the part of that wisdom pool. My mom says, you don't know what the Lord may do. Just go see it. Talk to him. So I do. We sit down in the dining, in the dining room, at the dining room table, and, and I tell him my story. Why? what I thought that this 10,000 square foot house would do. I wanted a place for, you know, missionaries when they came off the missionary field, they could come and stay and et cetera. So he gets up from the table. I never forget this. He's a successful businessman, had a successful business in, 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 in another city. He gets up from the table and he reaches a, and he says, hey, Sandy, right? He said, that's, that's why he said that. Can I call you, Sandy? And uh, she says, yes. Do you think you could enjoy living here? <laughs> she said, oh, yeah, 10,000 square foot, 12 square feet, 10, uh, 16 acres of land. Of course I could enjoy living I could here. Use we, that. All laugh. <laughs> we, we all laugh. And then he says, he, he reaches across the table, he shakes my hand. He says, Anthony, welcome home. He said, whatever it takes for you to get this house, you're going to get this house if I have to finance it for you. And sure enough, that's exactly what he did. He financed it for me. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm, this is the point I'm making. As we're leaving to go home uh, to, the, to the house that is flooded, he calls me. He says, Anthony, it's, it's obvious that God has a plan for your life. And I don't want to see the church or you get a black eye because you make bad decisions. Here's the point right here, bro. He says, would you mind if I be your mentor? When you come to something where we could just get together once a week and I can make sure you stay on track with what God has planned for you. I pull over to the side, I'm crying, I'm weeping because I know at this point, this is flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. Yeah. That, that this is exactly what I needed. And he became that. And for about 12 years until God took him home, that's what he was. And we would meet once a week and he would ask me those questions, you know, how's, this, how's, you, how's your wife, how's your family? Pray with me over my children, pray with me over the ministry, pray with me over the call to my life and et cetera. He was a part of that wisdom pool. Hmm. So, I, so when you ask me that, every step of my life for every major leap forward god has placed in my life individuals to help me get on track and stay on track even when i miss mm. the shot that is powerful surrounding yourself with wisdom yeah surround yourself with wisdom knowledge you can you can do a google search and find out anything you want to find out Right. But wisdom is a whole different animal. Wow. And that is the missing ingredient for the buck of where we are here today. Yeah. God puts a high value on wisdom. He tells, seek wisdom. You know? Wow. Wow. You are, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Some of this is so, um, it's so practical. It's so practical, but it's also, it just makes so much sense. 
I know, especially, you know, uh, us, you know, us black men, we don't like to receive a bunch of feedback from everybody about how we live. And we don't like that. Exactly. Exactly. And and uh, exactly. it's not unwarranted. We've been attacked on multiple levels <laughs> quite yeah. often. And but it's 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 that mindset shift. It's like it's almost counterintuitive. You don't need to push people away from you. You need to pull the right yeah. people in around you. And that's what that, fortifies you. That's not your exactly isolation. Right. Exact amen. 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 Because there's a level of vulnerability that goes along with that. Yeah. You sure. know, and, and, and as African American men, <laughs> we don't bad at that. Know, we don't roll in that vehicle, dog. <laughs> we don't roll, we don't ride in that car. You know, I'm not gonna be vulnerable around <laughs> no man. You know, what? No, bro. And that's a level of vulnerability that goes along with having those those people that speak in your life. And 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 then we have to make the decision. And, and here's the decision. Here's the decision for me. Is it is it is is my vision, is the vision that God has me, has for me, for my life, for my children's children, uh, worth me being vulnerable in order to reach it. And all day, seven days a week, the answer is yes. 100%. 100%. So it's just you just got to have the right ones, and God will send them. God will send the right people in your life, and He will send, you know. And for me, it's it's just been vital that I that they that that, that I've, I've received wisdom from some, some. I have I grew up around some strong women. My grandmother, my mom, my my mom's two sisters, but predominantly, it has been vitally important for me that I have strong men to pull from when it comes to making major decisions in my life and to be vulnerable to yeah. black and white. Wow. Oh man, that is so rich. Listen, if you are listening to empower you podcast right now, I want you to send this episode to the person you've been thinking about uh, while you're listening to this. Now, if you're like me, when you hear really, really cool stuff, you think about somebody, maybe you think about a couple people, mm. I don't want you to send this to everybody. I want you to send it to those people that you're thinking about right now who could really, really use this. And I want you to go to Apple or wherever you get your podcast and subscribe. What we are doing here is creating an environment where we can get these answers, where we can understand what it's going to take to get us over the hump. I myself am constantly learning from the guests that I have on this show and I hope you are learning too, because it is so important that we have this dialogue and not for fluff and not for fun, but for for real. Because if we get this, we could change not only our lives, but we have no idea the scope that we could really, really touch other people. So um, if you're listening, uh, which I, I assume you are, share this with somebody who you're thinking about. Um, this is this is an incredible, uh, Pastor Peyton. Before we get into the thought exercise, um, what would be your number one suggestion for the listener who feels really convicted right now? They're heavy. Maybe their stomach is a little upset. Their chest is fluttering a little bit because sometimes when things find you, it resonates mm -hmm. in your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And for that yeah. person who is just trying to take this in, what would you tell them right now? Well, you know, I, I wrote a book on leadership called uh, Leadership Reflections. And in that book, there's a chapter that I do do on, on, on scars, you know, and, and, and how we have to, we have to wear our scars like we wear designer uh, suits, you know, and 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 because they those scars and 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 the ways that we miss things and the things that have happened to me are, are, are were designed for us. They fit us. 
you know, as painful as it may be. And there are times when uh, uh, we, we want to hide those things. We want to hide those scars. You got to own them. You got you to embrace them. You know? and, 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 and in that chapter, I close out that chapter by saying, you know, there's an old Saturday night skit that the guy at the end of the, at the skit would say, and you look marvelous, you know. And, and I think that that's the thing that every person at this point has to admit, that despite everything that has happened to them, despite some even some self-inflicted wounds, they look marvelous. And they have to take that concept and that reality and, and, and go forth with it because they're still breathing, they're still alive. They got scars, but they're still here. And I look at my life as an example of that. You know, there's, I wouldn't try. I've done enough dope in my life that I should be dead. I can pull up this sleeve and show you scar tissue from shooting up drugs and almost losing this arm because of that. There is no reason why I should be able to even hold an intelligent conversation with you as much dope as I've done. But look at what we just talked about. Look at this conversation we just had on a plethora of issues, all coming back to the same thing. What am I saying then? Am I bragging on me? No, no, I'm not bragging. What I'm saying is if God did it for me, and him being no respect of person, he will do it for anyone. But we have to own our stuff, embrace it, move forward, leave it behind, go forth with it. I told the church yesterday, and, and, and then we can go, and I told the church yesterday, I said, one of the things I learned very is this, I was an intense, intentional sinner. <laughs> there was nothing passive about my life on the street. It was intense and it was intentional about everything I did on that street. There was no way I was going to be able to come into church as a saved person and sit on a pew passionless and no intensity born in me. There's no way I would have survived. Right. I learned that I had to put the same level of energy, effort, uh, and being saved, staying saved, as I did and staying on the streets. I couldn't phone it in. I couldn't phone it in, bro. Mm -mm. I had to do the work. I had to do the heavy lifting. I had to... I, had, I was responsible. I am responsible for the sweat equity of my life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would tell everybody. You are responsible for the sweat equity of your life. When you get to work, you attract people to come alongside of you and help you get the work done. Mm -hmm. You attract the right people in your life to help you do the heavy lifting. But you got to put the work in. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing. I, I think about, you know, we all talk about manifestation and whatever it is mm. that you, however you, yeah. you know, you subscribe yeah. to that, you know, um, yeah. regardless of what your faith is, the rea the principle is the same. Yeah. Yeah. But once yeah. you yeah. start to move, mm -hmm. that decision mm -hmm. creates mm -hmm. momentum around your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Wow. You are just holding a master class on on the truth that you hate right now. Oh, you you are wow. you are far exceeding anything I thought this interview is gonna be. And I'm so I enjoy I enjoy chopping it up with you, man. This is this is incredible. Even when we like I said, when we was talking before this and and, and earlier in the week, I I, I I knew that we clicked 
you know, uh, we, and, and I enjoyed the phone conversation. I think I, I think I looked at my, at the phone at one time, we had talked about 45 minutes and I had been <laughs> sitting in the, uh, the uh, in my driveway, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this is like, oh, wow. Uh, so I, I just applaud you and I celebrate you bro, for doing this and, and being consistent with it. You know, uh, one man plants, another man waters, the Bible says, but God gives the increase. And there's somebody that you're planting a seed in who's mm -hmm. never had the seed planted in them before. There's somebody, this conversation is water for them because the seed has been planted, but they needed some water. And there are times in, in, when you're doing this, bro, you got to always see. For those people that, that, that need watering, this, this that you're producing, this what you're giving out, is like the monsoon rain on the plains of Africa. It's just bringing life, Doc. It's just, it's just, it's just bringing life back. That is amazing. Thank you so much, especially coming from such a, a, a great man as yourself. That is, that is truly a compliment. I appreciate you so much. Um, okay. Thought exercise. And then I'm gonna let you go. I've already kept you a little bit longer than I said I was going to. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, bro. It's all good. So uh, the thought exercise is the moment in, in, every episode where our guest gives a tip, um, uh, maybe a book, a mental exercise, a perspective um, that uh, we can practice on a consistent basis throughout the course of our day uh, that will help us start to achieve, start to build that momentum towards making uh, and sustaining positive change. And so um, mm -hmm. it's, it's completely up to you how you want to connect with the audience. And um, the floor is yours. I'm excited to hear it. Thank you so much for listening to Empower You Podcast. All of our thought exercises will be available on EmpowerYouPodcast.com. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review and five stars. Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll see you over at EmpowerYouPodcast.com. That is, that is profound. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just, there's so much of that that resonates with me personally, and uh, I really, really appreciate that. I appreciate you, man. And I'm just not saying I'm not just I'm not patronizing you. I really mean that, man. I appreciate your ministry, if you allow me. That's what it is. <laughs> I appreciate your ministry and allow me in your pulpit. As, the, as they say in the black church, <laughs> you allow me in your pulpit, Reverend. And I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, oh man. Anytime. Anytime. I I'm thinking about. I really want to start a, a community uh, for for us, you know, um, for anybody, but for us, for sure, uh, yeah. where we can really, really dig in on some of these principles um, and, and we can invite people in to, to share the pulpit and really create something special. I've been thinking about this for a while. I put it on on social media. Um, I want you all, if you follow, if you're listening to this podcast, go to uh, Empower You Podcast on Instagram or Facebook and send me uh, a DM and let me know what you would want to hear if if we put this group together. Um, I've gotten a couple of responses. I want a couple more. I really want to make sure that we're doing something that is people focused and that way that informs everything else that we do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, send me a DM. I would love to hear from you. Uh, share this with 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 your with your loved one, whoever you're thinking about, and go follow Pastor Peyton on all of the channels. Pastor Peyton, how can they interact with you? How can they find you? How can they jump in your DM and say thank you, thank you for? Well, we're for on your... Facebook, and and you and and we do what we call the exchange. You can go to the, uh, that page on Facebook and. And find us there. Uh, we also do the same thing on, 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 on uh, uh, Instagram and, and, and YouTube, et cetera. We try to hit all the social media platforms. Um, and they can always call me, you know, they can go to the church page and find me there, C A Y A C C dot O R G. That's kayak, C A Y A C C dot O R G. Send me an inbox there, et cetera. 
you know, um, I, I, I respond to whatever it comes directly to me and I do respond. That's awesome. That's awesome. Pastor Faden, thank you so much for your time this evening. Oh, I feel richly blessed. I got a lot to think about. I got a lot to think about. I'm so thank you, bro. appreciative. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you, man. You Appreciate you. Oh, that's so good. I'm just like, all my wheels are turning now. <laughs> all my wheels are turning. Y'all be blessed out there. Um, thank you so much for listening to Empower You Podcast. We're doing something really special over here, and and, uh, and I'm glad that you are here listening. I appreciate your time. Um, and uh, find Pastor Peyton, uh, The Exchange, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, and just send him a DM and say thank you. So just, just say thank you. Um, he's given his life experiences for us and uh, it's powerful. So we appreciate you and we will talk to you all a little later. Peace. Empower You Podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners. We discuss a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, cultural, and societal perspective. We believe that through tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. Subscribe to our channel and let us empower you.